Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting a ton of containers around our house and I wanna try something a little bit different and I don't know if it's gonna work, but instead of doing one really long video where I try to just group a bunch of projects together, I want to film these separately. So three separate videos, we're gonna put them all out on the same day. So you'll still see them all at the same time, but I think it'll make it one, the video is a little bit shorter because I tend to want to like talk about the history of all the projects we've done in the different areas where I'm gonna be. And that'll allow us time to do that. And two, it makes it a little bit easier to organize. Otherwise, like if I put a bunch of projects into one video, I tend to want to title it like planting a bunch of things, <laughs> planting a bunch of containers without actually saying what it is if that makes sense so it makes it easier for us to find those projects later on I don't know so I'd really like your feedback after we try this out to see if it's something that you guys like as well I don't know it's worth a shot so video number one or project number one for today is planting up the 14 large concrete containers we have along the east side of our property so all of these right here Nice sunny still day today. So this is the fourth year we're planting up containers along this fence line. We started off with the True Drop dot containers from Crescent Garden, which are the self-watering containers in 2017. We planted those up with the above and beyond recipe, which is Super Tuna Vista Bubblegum, Vista Fuchsia, and Vista Silverberry, which I highly recommend. Like if you are a beginner gardener or if you just need something that performs amazing, that's probably one of the best combinations of plants you can plant together that's just amazing. We had a purple mountain grass in the center and it was just a really fun project and it worked out well for us to have self-watering over there because we didn't have drip set up um, we didn't really have access to water easily over there so it was really really great the second year so 2018 we did super tunia bordeaux and super tunia limoncello I, I can't remember if i did anything else in the containers with those two plants but i do remember that the limoncello just did not hold up very well with the bordeaux um, i think that it's since been improved maybe Maybe? I'm not really sure. You cats are distracting me. They're like right at my feet. Roughhousing. Look at those tails. It's weird. Cheddar's always the one like that, what's the word? Submissive? Like gets on the ground, but he's the one who eggs it on all the time. Russell's just in like defending himself. Anyway, so 2018, it was pretty, but they didn't get quite as big as they did the year before. And I really, I love that soft yellow and the soft lavender color together. I always have always will <laughs> love those colors together 2019 was the year of our container competition which started out really fun ended up looking like a complete and total mess Aaron actually agrees with me on that he always wanted to like the years before he wanted to do them all differently and so 2019 we thought we'd make a competition out of it and it was fun because I think it was Aaron's first time of I'm underneath the willow here of um actually planting up a container I think he actually said like this is the first time I'm actually popping a plant down in a pot which was amazing to me but he picked out uh, plants for seven of them I picked out plants for seven of them and we just saw how they grew on some of his were amazing some of mine looked great I mean it was just kind of a fun year just to try out different stuff um, but it was not very pleasing to the eye in the end it just looked like there was no place for your eye to rest uh, which you kind of need I need that um, and when you have too many different things all lined up in a row it just gets to be kind of a jumble so 2020 last year was the best year so far we swapped the self-watering containers out for these large concrete containers from unique stone we had brick pads built underneath so that they were all level um, I used an angle grinder to grind out a spot in those bricks so that we could run our quarter inch drip tube underneath the pots and up through the drain hole so we have them all set up on drip now um, now that they're not self-watering containers which they worked great those self-watering containers for the years they were out there but you still had to go out once a week which is uh, better than every single day but it's also nice to have them on drip now so now we don't even have to go out at all and water them except to fertilize so we got all the drip set up to them and then I planted a purple fountain no skyrocket penicetum I think is what I used geez look at these cats like how am I supposed to work with this business going on mercy so anyway, yeah, I think I used Skyrocket Penicetum last year. So it's the grass with the white variegation. Three zonal geraniums that were a coral color, which were absolutely gorgeous. And in fact, Aaron in the beginning, he was like, I don't like geraniums, I don't know about this. And by the end, he was like, oh, those are awesome. So we won, uh, 
Aaron over for geraniums, which is awesome. And then we um, use Supertunia Bordeaux, Supertunia Trailing Rosevain, a White Knight Lobularia, and an Ipomea, Sweetheart Lime. Um, and they were glorious. I think the consistency of water, we um, had our budworm kind of spraying system down. We did it every week as a preventative rather than letting the budworms attack and then having to go on the uh, defense, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we sprayed him every single week with um, either Captain Jack's dead bug or BT, whatever we happen to have on hand, and it kept the budworms at bay. They were just absolutely gorgeous. So this year, since Samantha was born this year, I'm going with all pink. This is a pink year in these containers. Let me show you. Um, in fact, I'm really excited because one of the plants, the centerpiece plant, is a new annual for 2021 called Unplugged Pink Salvia. I've never used salvia as a centerpiece out here, and I think Think it's gonna be good so here we go here's container number one they're gonna all be the same I'm gonna use one of these unplugged pink which isn't that glorious so the calyx that holds the bloom on is like a deep burgundy color so even when these bright pink blooms kind of fade and fall off it still looks like the plants in bloom you do not have to deadhead it in order for it to keep blooming it'll just keep on producing blooms and then the spent ones that are still left up still look like blooms it kind of gives you like a multi color look now they grow about 24 to 30 inches tall so i think it'll be a perfect centerpiece like it'll come up not too much and then i'm going to surround it with two different plants this is called super beania super beania did i just say beania oh my gosh hearkening back to the year where i could not get that pronunciation right anyway <laughs> Superbina Sparkling Rose. So we've got a bicolor pink Superbina here. And Superbina can typically hold up really well to Supertunia's Vigor. They do really well. And then we've got Supertunia Vista Bubblegum. So three bubblegums, three Superbinas, one Salvia in each container. You can see the drip tubing here. We use the quarter inch with the drip emitters every six inches and it comes up right here and then we just twirl it around the outer rim of the pot and then it twirls in toward the centerpiece and I'm gonna use landscape staples to tack it down. We had daffodils in these pots. We planted ice follies. Gorgeous show this spring. We put fresh soil in there this fall, planted them up with the daffodils, enjoyed those. The daffodils have gone to a friend's house. They're already planted in the ground so that she and her family can enjoy them. Um, and I just left the soil at the bottom of these containers because the daffodils didn't tax the soil too much. Um, the only time I replace the soil is after they've been used for an entire season. So spring planting, summer planting, fall planting, I typically keep the same soil in there over the winter, put greens in, and then in the spring we start with fresh soil. Um, but this time around we just topped them up with fresh, and I'm going to be putting in flower tone flower food, uh, which is a slow release, and planting these up. I think it's going to be so, so pretty. I'm excited. So here are my supplies right here. This is actually going to go probably pretty quick. Planting is always the quickest part. and Aaron and I were just commenting on how pretty we think that this whole area is gonna be this year. So here's a look at it all put together. We've got the salvia there in the center and then a super tuna vista bubblegum right on the front and I did that in every single container and then split the rest of the container in thirds. So it's kind of a triangle there. And then the superbina sparkling rose is in the other triangle. So each one of them will have kind of the same appearance but both the superbina and of course the super tuna vista bubblegum which is probably one of the easiest to grow annuals ever, and it gets huge. They both are really fast growers. They're both vigorous, and I'm hoping that they both can hold their own. Well, I know the bubblegum can. 
sparkling rose should. And then you can see how the drip goes. It originates over here, that's where it comes up, and then it just twirls around the base of these plants and then twirls around to the center plant and that's where it ends. There's a little ender right there. It's gonna be pretty. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a hose faucet right here. I'm gonna go grab one of our hose carts and hook it up so that it reaches the full distance. And I'm gonna water them all in by hand first just to make sure all the soil's settled because inevitably there'll be one where I need to add a tiny little bit of soil onto the top where it's settled down a little bit. And then we will test the drip and make sure they're all working and then the drip is gonna take care of it from this point forward. So that is project number one for today. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing these come together and I'm hoping we We've got some really fun things to show you, even in one month. I think in one month with all the heat we're supposed to be getting right away, we're gonna see some tremendous growth and they're gonna fill in really quickly. So project number two for today, we're gonna move toward the barn and plant up the four containers up there. I'm utilizing three annuals, two of which are new for next year. So I'm very excited for this next project. Uh, anyway, we are gonna go ahead and link all three projects or the next two projects rather in the description of this video down below. So if you wanna follow up on those next two, you can easily click down there um, and get to the next one. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Bye.